Welcome back to Think Thrice Problem Solving. Today we're going to be solving a Putnam exam problem. Uh, we're going to be using Feynman's technique in this video, but there's two ways to solve this um, that I'm going to be showing in videos. If you'd like to give it a shot, please pause the video. Otherwise, we're going to jump straight into the solution. So Feynman's technique is a method for solving integrals where we introduce a dummy variable. And the reason that we introduce the dummy variable is to get the integral in a form that we can integrate with respect to x. So this thing right here looks really, really ugly. It's not impossible to integrate with respect to x, but it's pretty tough. So what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to make it a little bit easier on ourselves. So the idea behind Feynman's technique is it's called differentiating under the integral. So we're introducing this a variable, which we know that a equals one. So if I just plug in a one up here, my function is exactly the same. So I, the function I of one is just my first integral. But what we're gonna do is we're going to differentiate with respect to this dummy variable. And when we do that, we're gonna see that it's gonna get in a little bit simpler form. So we're still gonna have one plus x squared in the denominator. Integral, or differentiating one plus ax is gonna give us one plus ax in the denominator. And then x is acting as a constant because we're differentiating with respect to a, so I'm going to be left with x in the numerator. Okay, and this looks a little bit cleaner because now I no longer have that natural log. So we're going to solve this kind of how you probably are thinking in your head. We're going to use partial fraction decomposition. So I'm going to get ax plus b over 1 plus x squared plus c over 1 plus ax. And we're going to go ahead and work through this and see if we can get to some sort of nice solution. So if I kind of separate this, so if I look at my x squared terms, I'm going to have a times little a um, plus c. And that's going to be equal to 0. If I have my x terms, I'm going to have ax plus ba, so a plus ba is equal to x, so equal to 1. <coughs> then if I look at my x to the 0 terms, I'm going to get uh, b plus c, I know that's a little ugly up there now, but b plus c is equal to 0. So if we go ahead and solve for b and c here, so this first equation, I can get c is equal to negative a times at little a. Second equation, I can see that I'm going to get b is equal to 1 minus big A over little a. And then I could take these two guys and plug them into that third equation. So I'm going to get negative a a plus 1 minus a over a is equal to zero. So a times little a plus one over a is equal to one. So I move the a's over to the other side and then factor that out. Um, so now, uh, sorry, one over a. One over a. So now I'm going to get a is equal to one over a over a plus 1 over a, multiply by a over a, which is going to give me 1 over 1 plus a squared. Now looking at my first equation, I get c is equal to negative a times little a, which is going to give me negative a over 1 plus a squared. And then for my third equation, I'm going to get b is equal to negative c, which is a over 1 plus a squared. Okay, so we found the partial fraction decomposition. So I'm going to remind you what we're doing. So we're finding I prime of A is still going to be equal to the integral. But now I have my constants. So I'm going to have AX plus B. Both of them have this 1 over 1 plus A squared. So I'm going to factor that out. So 1 over 1 plus A squared. And I'm going to multiply that by... Um, this 1 
times x. So just going to have x plus b, so plus a, divided by 1 plus x squared. And that's going to be minus a over 1 plus ax dx. And now you should notice that this is actually in a form that we're going to be able to integrate. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and work through some of this. So I'm going to go ahead and integrate with respect to x. So we're still looking at i prime of a, and we can pull that 1 over 1 plus a squared out of there. And I'm going to have that times the integral of x over 1 plus x squared. So we'll kind of pull these out one by one. So let me move this down a little bit. Okay, so the integral of x over 1 plus x squared dx. So if I make u equal to 1 plus x squared, du is going to be x. So this is actually going to be the natural log of 1 plus x squared over 2. So you could take the derivative of that. We get 1, plus, 1 over 1 plus x squared, multiply by 2x, boom, we get our original function. Uh, the second one, so if I look at a over 1 plus x squared, so if I integrate that dx, that's going to give me a times arctan of x. And then my third equation, so if I look at the integral of a over 1 plus ax, it looks like I'm going to have the natural log of um, 1 plus ax. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and put those together. So I'm going to have this times the natural log of 1 plus x squared over 2 plus a times arctan of x plus the natural log of 1 plus ax. All right, and we're going to put all of those guys together. And we are going to evaluate. So we're going to evaluate all those from 0 to 1. Okay, so our ultimate equation here, we're going to have i prime of a is going to be equal to ln of 1 plus x squared. ln of 1 plus 1 is 2. So I'm going to have 1 over 1 plus a squared times ln of 2 over 2 minus ln of 1 is 0 plus a times arctan of 1, which is pi over 4, and arctan of 0 is just 0. And then I'm going to have this last one, so ln of 1 plus a, and then minus ln of 1 plus 0, which is just 0. Okay, so this is looking a little bit cleaner. Uh, it's not kind of in a perfect form quite yet, but it's something we can <clears throat> uh, potentially work with a little bit. Okay, so now my goal is going to be what we've done. So we've integrated with respect to x. So our whole goal was to get this in a form where we could integrate with respect to x, and we've done that. But you notice that we still have this derivative with respect to a. So we need to figure out what's going on here. So let's go ahead and integrate i prime of a to get back to our original function i of a because remember our original function we were solving was just i of a. So we're going to come down here and we're going to integrate with respect to a so integral of 1 plus 1 1 over 1 plus a squared is just going to give me so I'll move this down just like we did above so for the first one so ln of 2 over 2 times 1 over 1 plus a squared. So the integral of dA is just going to be ln of 2 over 2 times arctan of a. So I'm going to have ln of 2 over 2 times arctan of a. 
Uh, for the second one, I have the integral of 1 over 1 plus a squared times a times pi over 4 dA. So similar to before, I'm going to have uh, the integral of that is going to be uh, natural log of 1 plus a squared divided by 2 times pi over 4. So we can just write that as pi over 8. And then I have this last term, which doesn't look very good. Right now, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to leave that as the integral of ln of 1 plus a over 1 plus a squared. Okay. And what I want you to notice is that when we do an integral like this, so if I integrate from 0 to, say, a, um, and I'll, I'll kind of plug that in here. So the, the variable inside doesn't matter. So if I just call this natural log of 1 plus x over 1 plus x squared dx, then what's going to happen is I'm going to have big F evaluated at a minus big F evaluated at some constant. And as long as I'm adding a constant, these two guys kind of get combined together. So I'm really just getting f of a minus or plus a constant. So what we're going to do is we're just going to rewrite that last integral exactly how I just wrote it. So we're going to write that as 0 to a of 1 plus x or x squared dx. Okay. And then at the end, I'm going to have that integrating constant, which I just discussed. Okay, So we do need to figure out what that integrating constant is going to be. So in order to find that, I have to use some sort of known value. So let's look back at our original equation. When we're looking in here, is there any value of a that we know the solution of this integral for? And when you're looking at this, you're probably thinking, oh, well, I know what ln of 1 is. ln of 1 is just 0. That's an easy integral. So if we plug in a equals 0, we can actually solve for that integrating constant. So let's do that. So if I wanted to say, so what we've got down here now is i of a. So let's do i of 0. We know that's going to equal 0 from above. That's going to be ln of 2 over 2 times arctan of 0, which is 0 plus ln of 1, which is 0, times pi over 8, plus ln of, plus this whole thing here, uh, but it's the integral from 0 to 0 of a bunch of stuff dx, which is going to be 0, plus c. So what does that tell us? That tells us that that integrating constant is 0. All right, so we're at a pretty good spot here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this original function, i of a, down. So we're going to pull him down and look at it. So our i of a was the integral from 0 to 1 of um, natural log of 1 plus ax over 1 plus x squared dx. And that's going to be equal to ln of 2 over 2 times arctan of a plus natural log of 1 plus a squared times pi over 8 plus the integral from 0 to a of ln of 1 plus x over 1 plus x squared dx. All right, and then here's where the last kind of magic we're going to do is. So up at the top, we defined this variable a, and we said our original function, this guy, was when a equals 1. So let's go ahead and plug 1 in down here at the bottom. So my new equation is going to be I'm going to have the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of 1 plus x over 1 plus x squared is equal to the natural log of 2 over 2 times arctan of 1, which is pi over 4, 
plus the natural log of 1 plus 1, which is ln of 2, um, times pi over 8. plus the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of 1 plus x over 1 plus x squared dx. So what do we see? We see that we have this guy and this guy are the same guy on both sides. So we have 2 i of 1 is equal to ln of 2 over 2 times pi over 4, because we're adding pi over 8 plus pi over 8, which tells us that i of 1, which is our original integral, integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log 1 plus x over 1 plus x squared, is equal to ln of 2, uh, sorry, this is going to be ln of 2 times pi over 4, it's going to be equal to ln of 2 times pi over 8. And that is going to be our final solution for our problem. So a little bit circuitous, uh, maybe, but it's a, it's a method that is commonly used to solve some of our very challenging integrals. So what did we do? We introduced this dummy variable, a. We took the derivative with respect to a, so that we got our integral in a form that we could integrate with respect to x. We simplified, then we integrated with respect to a to get back to our original function. And then uh, after determining our integrating constant, we were able to solve our original integral. So if you enjoyed this problem, please like and subscribe. If you have your own problem you'd like me to solve, please submit it. You may see it in a future video. And as you're solving problems on your own, think once, think twice. And if you get stuck, think thrice.